about 50 years ago, planted by squirrels or storms, was a fir tree seed right behind me. So this is a tree probably less than a century old, has the potential to be over 200 feet high. Probably not here in the Cuyamaca Mountains will it get that high. Might get up to 100 feet or more given time here in the high mountains of San Diego County. Okay, I, hang, I think I see something up there. On this healthy fur behind me is a healthy parasite. The mistletoe extracts from its host water and minerals, but photosynthesizes on its own. So it's only half a parasite. And the tree and the parasite seem to be getting along just fine. Most likely the parasitic mistletoe will not cause major damage to this white fir tree. They seem to get along over the centuries just fine. How did the mistletoe get up on the top of that fir tree? Probably birds. Mistletoe seeds are sticky. Mistletoe seeds can also go through the alimentary canal of a bird and alight on a twig, germinate. Doesn't have roots that go into soil. It has root-like structures that go into the tissue of the tree and parasitize it. We're here on Cuyamaca Peak, the second highest peak in San Diego County. This white fur behind me here is probably the highest white fur in the county, right here on the top of this mountain peak. To the south of me is Mexico. The white fur distribution goes into San Pedro Martir to the south, no further south. We've got wolf lichen here on the dark bark of this white fur and a folios lichen, two different species of lichen. This tree has been here a while. It takes a while for the lichens to uh, establish themselves. But you might be curious about a white fir with dark bark, and that's because the name comes from younger twigs and younger bark, which is white. So white fir comes from the whiteness, not on the old bark, but on newer twigs. The fir trees have a flat needle. They're not bundled like the pines. In the western U.S., we've got about 40 species. In California, we have about a half a dozen. Here in San Diego, we have one species. The cones of firs attach themselves to the very top part of the tree. The male cones will be lower down, so when the male cones produce the pollen, the wind blows them off to another tree. Rarely does the pollen from the lower branches of one tree reach the top branches of the same tree. So you have a cross-pollination strategy with female cones high on the tree, male cones lower down. The cones of firs don't hang from the trees like pines. They're upright and they don't normally fall and make themselves available on the ground. They usually fall apart. You can see the little scales, but here is a cone quite unusual. This is probably half a cone, the top half. You can see how it flakes apart very easily. So the cones on fur not normally picked up from around the base of the tree. They'll fall apart on the tree and they also don't hang, they're upright. So we're about at the southern distribution of white firs. White firs cover most of the mountainous west. They're a little larger in California than they are in the Colorado Rockies. Some people think it's a different species. We'll call it Abies concolor and forget all the five varieties of white fur.